The mission of the United States Navy is to defend our nation with combat-ready naval forces. Every day, the men and women of the Navy hone their skills through rigorous and frequent training and strive to be good stewards of the sea while maintaining military readiness. The Lower Chesapeake Bay is an important training area for the Navy, where it maintains several installations on the bay and along the James and York Rivers in Virginia. We like to train like we fight. When our warfighters deploy, uh, they need to be properly trained to execute their mission. They need to understand their procedures cold so that when they're called upon to do their job, they can execute their job, and that's what we do back here. These same waters are home to the endangered Atlantic sturgeon, a species the Navy is committed to help monitor and protect. The Atlantic sturgeon, it's actually one of the oldest fish out there. It's very large. The largest recorded is about 14 feet and weigh up to about 800 pounds. The sturgeon spend most of their lives in saltwater and migrate upstream into freshwater to reproduce. Once found in abundance all along the East Coast, the species is now struggling to survive as the result of pollution, habitat destruction, and overfishing. The population declined and it still hasn't recovered. There's just this gauntlet of different threats they face. Atlantic sturgeon were listed under the Endangered Species Act in 2012. We listed them because of the threats they faced, so what we're working to do is try to lessen all of those threats to get the populations to recover. The Navy's construction activities and training at sea are vital military readiness activities. Recognizing these activities have the potential to impact sturgeon, the Navy has taken the lead in supporting innovative sturgeon research in the lower Chesapeake Bay. We have a responsibility to conserve endangered species that are listed under the Endangered Species Act. And so it's important for us to better understand the movements and habits of Atlantic sturgeon in these areas. One of the big data gaps we found was for the Chesapeake Bay region where data just really didn't exist, yet that was a big hub for a lot of Navy activity. To learn about the sturgeon's habitat range and movement patterns, the Navy turned to researcher Chris Hager. All right, so as you guys know, We've been trying to find these Pamunkey River fish to get genetic samples off of them to do comparison uh, with the James River stock. It's harder and harder for these fish to actually find suitable spawning habitat, and thus it's harder and harder for us to find them because their numbers are reduced as is their essential habitat. In researching for suitable spawning habitat, Chris read historic accounts, studied charts, and worked closely with the local Pamunkey Indian tribe. We love the water. It's part of our life. We have a real close tie, including um, those who depend upon fishing to live or feed families. Prior to the Navy's research, only one spawning population was known to still exist in this region, in the James River. Chris's team headed far up the neighboring York River system and into an unstudied section of the Pamunkey River. It was great because the first day we put nets in the water, we caught fish. We were right on them. As soon as a fish is captured in the net, they gently bring the fish aboard immobilize it in a special harness, and guide it to shore. I've been up real close to them, never touched one, until I started working this project. And then it was like meeting an old friend and wanting to cry at the same time. The team takes a DNA sample and conducts a quick riverside surgery to insert a small radio tag. Really? All right, let's uh, boogie them out to the release site. The work of finding, Capturing and studying these giant fish is already providing important new information. One of the big discoveries that the Navy has funded here is that there is a spawning population in the York River, which was unknown previously. Rebuilding the Atlantic sturgeon population will require maintaining a healthy population of reproductive adults. If it can spawn, you know, four times or five times in its lifetime, with millions of eggs each time. That's a lot of offspring that one female can produce. So protecting that one animal to let it live to its full life maturity, the benefits are amazing. We'll just slide them back. Pull them back. Easy, easy go. Sometimes it's easy going, sometimes it's not. <laughs> 
Each radio tag broadcasts a unique numerical code that is recorded when a tagged fish swims near an acoustic receiver. The Navy coordinated with federal, state, and private landowners to place 75 receivers on navigation buoys, bridge pilings, private piers, and docks. We've established an extensive array throughout pretty much the entire lower Chesapeake and we've covered the entire mouth of the bay and out about 10 miles out near the Atlantic. We've got tags in those fish now so we can see where they move and which habitats they're using and where they're spawning possibly. The Navy's research comes as part of a larger effort being undertaken all along the East Coast. 59 and a quarter. By working cooperatively, researchers can maximize efficiency, reduce costs, and greatly improve the level of knowledge not only about the local Atlantic sturgeon spawning populations in the Chesapeake Bay, but about the species as a whole throughout its full range along the entire Atlantic coast. So we've been providing information to several universities and federal organizations, federal agencies, um, up and down the coast from Florida up to, to Maine. The acoustic array has already detected over 500 tagged sturgeon, 20 of which were tagged by Chris and his team as part of this Navy-funded endeavor. As the data continue to roll in, researchers are realizing the value of the array system in tagging and tracking other endangered or threatened species. Uh, we also work with our other federal partners as well as state partners, including the National Marine Fisheries Service and uh, the states of North Carolina and Virginia. And we meet regularly to talk about where the, the direction of those projects, where we've got receivers out to make sure that we don't overlap and we're not we're not duplicating efforts, that we can get the, the best benefit for the species with the lowest amount of money spent. And then we can work with that data later on to try to determine what the potential impact will be from Navy operations in those areas, if any, and try to minimize our impacts. The data from the receiver array will help the Navy better understand when, and for how long, Navy activities overlap with the sturgeon's use of the Chesapeake Bay region. This knowledge will ultimately be used to help protect Atlantic sturgeon that are en route to and from their spawning grounds in the James and York rivers. So these fish are now coming back and they're entering the rivers and they're spawning again. They might have 20 more years to live. And so was these fish now, like we're impressed by catching an eight footer, you know, you don't know 10 years from now, we might be saying we're catching 12 foot fish. The Navy is committed to being a good steward of the sea while maintaining military readiness. Navy scientists and environmental planners support the Navy's mission and environmental commitments by preparing environmental planning documents, managing a comprehensive marine species monitoring program, and designing and executing numerous other environmental stewardship projects sponsored by the United States Fleet Forces Command.